so the Pueblo government, city government, police have given me until today to get all of this crap cleaned up. Apparently it's litter and garbage, even though it can be used to build chicken coops and have bonfires and enjoy my life and build the soil, which is exactly why it's here, even if it's for permaculture projects. I get that it looks dumpy right now, but there's a reason for all of it. But I have until today to clean it up, according to their threatening letter. So they'll be hearing about that probably in city council meetings pretty soon. Anyway, um, this video is going to start off a new series, a new um, playlist instead of the Pueblo Permaculture Suburban Project or whatever it's called. It's going to be Southern Colorado Permaculture Project where I kind of, so like I have a client up in Manitou right now that I'm starting to work on her house. in her garden and all of that. So wherever I go in Southern Colorado and work on permaculture, I'm probably gonna make videos about it and show people what they're doing. And you know, that way they can learn how to do it for themselves if they wish. Live the life they want. So I'm here at one of my permaculture gardening clients in Manitou right now. Um, just kind of documenting what I've been doing a little bit. I have Denna up here, so hopefully she doesn't spook the deer. But I had to do some surgery on a couple of these rose bushes that she had here. Well, my uh, friend did the surgery. I will link in the description of this video uh, how I learned about pruning roses, personally. There's a YouTube video that was very informative. Um, I, I don't recall the name of the channel, but I'll figure it out and put it in the description. Prune these down so that they have a better shot next year. They got kind of diseased here. They haven't, I don't know, the watering system was not working as it was supposed to, or something. I don't remember exactly what happened, but, um, had to do some surgery on these rose bushes. I put new soil on top so that there's plenty of nutrients for next year and keeps the roots a little warmer. Uh, and it should come back nice and then I'll shape it kind of the way they describe in the video, like a vase. Um, up here, I need to still talk to the client about what her tenant would want up here. He's got some dogs. So my original thought was like a hairy vetch and clover combo so that you don't have to mow it like at all. You just keep it watered and it stays low to the ground. But I don't know how often the dogs are out here or whether or not that would work because it seemed like in my yard this year in a high traffic area, it wouldn't be the best solution maybe like some combination of native grasses would be better but that's what we did here right hound leave it leave it go uh this box we salvaged what we could we took some stuff out of it um there's irrigation going to it so i just got to ask her what she would want in here next year and then then I'll leave it go 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 Leave it, leave it, go. Okay, so. Now, come on. Don't pull, oh my God. Oh my God, they're not. Down here, I just finished the sheet mulching. Oh, Dennis tangling me up, sorry. I just basically put cardboard over what was growing and some fungal starts. And then I put dark humus mulch on top and it's got 
irrigation down here for next year. My client likes uh, native grasses that come back every year and look cool and have seed heads and all that stuff. So I'm gonna try and put stuff like that down here, get it watered. I'm still in the process of teaching myself uh, irrigation. I'm not teaching myself. A very knowledgeable person has been teaching me, but ultimately I don't have a lot of time right now. So I'm going to do the irrigation at my own house and hopefully when I have the right combination of time and money, I will do the irrigation at my house and kind of learn hands-on that way and maybe hire out um, the person that I'm learning from. Look, it's more Bambi. So this is, what I'm doing is a permaculture gardener effectively out in Manitou. I don't have like a lot of clients right now and I have a very divided attention between this and grad school and some other potential projects down south near La Vida. Um, I've been driving a lot and I found out, I did a little off-roading and this little plastic thing on here on the GMC Canyon. Um, it was put there for gas mileage purposes, but it's not the best for off-roading. So my gas mileage since this happened has been in the tank. I got to take this thing off there, clearly. It's been flapping around, dragging on the ground. Anyway, this is what I'm doing with these tools that I have available to me. This truck, which I had a topper on the back and I was using it for camping because part of the reason that I bought this truck, see the deer in the background, was that it is exactly, the bed is as tall as I am effectively, where I could sleep comfortably. So I had the topper on there. I camped in the fall, in the spring. I never did brave the winter, but I didn't have any heat. So I just had the Sub-Zero bag. I could have braved the winter, but I didn't. Um, I bought this truck for living the life I wanted out in Colorado as a service-connected disabled veteran. I wasn't service-connected disabled at the time that I moved out here. I hadn't put in for um, the physical and mental issues that I have dealt with having served in a war that was fabricated by the media in Iraq, the media and the government. But I have been out here trying to live my best life despite all that. And it's actually a really good time to, <laughs> as any veteran, who might be service-connected, disabled, either for physical reasons or mental reasons. Um, they could be out here doing this. There is work available for people who may not fit into society as well as the average bear, which I would say is Many veterans. Let me see a buck there. They don't even fear anybody anymore. They get fed. But as I was saying, this is a good place to be to work on your mental health. You can earn a living easily. You can find work despite um, some issues that you might have fitting into the mold of a corporate structure or fitting into the mold of society in general. If you have addictive issues, maybe this isn't the worst place to work that out if you're ready to do that. 
um, in my humble opinion, and I'm pretty sure there's research on that, the healing power of nature and working outside in it. But there is work available here, here for disabled veterans, service-connected disabled veterans. So anybody that has personally thanked me and Denna for my service, I would request that they share this video or videos like it if people would be interested in what I'm doing up here and learning how I'm living my best life with no job at the moment, <laughs> no real job at the moment. I am trying to provide a roadmap for people who have been through similar things as I have. So if you have thanked me for my service, I would appreciate a share and or a like or comments on the video. Um, trying to build up my YouTube subscribership a little bit so that I can live stream and just tell people when I go live and show them when something cool happens, like a big, a big, a big ass buck and just walks by, you know, like I'm already living my best life. I'm trying to teach others how. Thank you. Hey there, Chip. You wanna... You did wanna hop on, okay. Okay. We're going this way. Gracie, come on. Ugh. Let me see if I can turn around the camera. Oh, God. Here we are. I'm gonna have to think of a name for this one. Um, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? <laughs>